in Panama City, Florida, Dean Grubbs, a world-renowned expert on the ecology of sharks, is preparing for an 18-day research cruise. He is joined by colleagues from Florida State University. The team's mission is to catch deep ocean fish living near the site of the 2010 blowout. Their goal is to create a baseline of information, as well as to discover the long-term impact on fish living in areas covered with deep water horizon oil. When everyone realized that the spill occurred at about 5,000 feet deep, uh, the first question folks started asking was, what lives down there? What organisms, what communities are actually being affected by this oil right now? So I updated the schedule. Dean Grubbs and the vessel's captain go over the itinerary. So that should get us in before midnight. Sound good? Twelve hours later, they reach their first research site. So we're getting ready to bait up. So on these sets, we set 50 hooks. They range from little tiny 10-aught hooks that take little tiny baits up to 16-aught hooks that take basically the whole side of a carcass. That allows us to basically catch everything from the smallest of sharks up to the largest of sharks, the big snake eels and that kind of thing, all on the same set. Let me know when you're ready, Captain. All right, going over. So we're putting out our largest hooks first. These will be the last ones that we bring in. They're the ones that tend to catch the really big sharks, the 14-foot tiger sharks and 17-foot six-gill sharks and things like that. I think I got it. The team puts out a series of baited hooks. All clear. About two hours later, we're ready. they're ready to pull in the lines. Fish on. Whenever we get a fish on, we'll ID the fish. It'll get a specimen number. From there, if it's a shark, then it'll get a temperature taken and blood sampled by Bianca for stress physiology work. And then it'll get measured and weighed. 96. And John will take liver and bile. Those are all the samples that will go for the toxicology work. It's a pretty streamlined process. The ironic thing is we actually tried to get funding to do this exact kind of work to get baseline data in preparation for a spill three years prior to the spill. There was no interest. And, um, and so we were behind the curve when the spill happened. No one knew what the, uh, uh, what the effects may be or what animals may be affected. And so that's why we actually sample all the way from just a few miles from the spill up to almost 300 miles away from the spill. Despite the hour, the team continues to set lines, El Cha. haul in fish, and collect baseline data and toxicology samples. They will work through the night and into the morning. For oceanographers, these marathon sessions are often a time for reflection. When I was about seven years old, I actually caught a little Atlantic sharp-nosed shark, and I told my parents I was going to be a marine biologist. I went through stages where I wanted to be a pro football player and a rock star, but eventually I came back to being a marine biologist, and so that's the career path I chose. <laughs> 